Hey guys, this is Dane Olson. I'm a customer service representative here at the Boulder headquarters of Backcountry Access. And today I'm going to run through all the steps that you need to do after your cylinder has been deployed to get it ready to be refilled again. We at Backcountry Access recommend deploying your cylinder at least once every year. For this reason, we have included our cylinder refill kit, which includes three valve stem O-rings, an Allen wrench, some vacuum grease, which is specific for high altitudes and low temperatures, and a toothpick. Now that your cylinder's been deployed, the gauge should read zero or very close to zero. Uh, if you do see that valve stem up, that does mean that the cylinder's been deployed. I wanna quickly just talk about the different parts of the cylinder. Here you have the fill port, which is where your cylinder will be hooked up to uh, either a scuba tank or a compressor to be refilled. At the top here we have the housing of the cylinder uh, trigger mechanism, which contains some hex screws as well as the valve stem, the trigger cable cover uh, threads for that, and then your trigger pin threads as well. Lastly, we have our gold um, quick disconnect coupler, which is where you hook up your air hose. Now, if you just bought a cylinder brand new and it was shipped to you empty, most likely the trigger pin is now down, like so, and uh, that has a new O-ring on it, no need to replace, so you can just take it to wherever to get refilled and uh, no, nothing else needs to be done. Now if the valve sim is sitting up, which indicates that the cylinder's been deployed, then we will need to replace these, uh, the O-ring that's inside this valve stem with the new ones that are provided with the kit as well as some of this vacuum grease. In the case that you have deployed it, like we just did, then we will need to take our Allen wrench and get to that valve stem in order to replace this O-ring. So what we'll do is unscrew these. Remove the two screws here out of the housing. Now, in order to get the housing off, you can either just pull, or what I like to do, just to make it easy, is pull on the trigger there, so it allows you to take that housing off, and then you can take the valve stem out. Now, uh, for whatever reason, if the valve stem is a little bit difficult to get out, um, you'll just want to maybe wrap a cloth around it and use a pair of uh, pliers or something that you can get a good grip with in order to get it out. Uh, sometimes if it's just been sitting for a long time, it can be um, a bit more difficult to get out than I just showed you right there. The valve stem here originally had the O-ring attached to this groove, and since the deployment, all the pressure from the cylinder has caused that O-ring to now be blasted out of this groove, and then up against this fatter part of the valve stem. So what I'm gonna do is remove this O-ring, grab a new one, and um, apply some grease to help with the seal and then pop it back into that groove. And once you have that, you can pop it off and we'll discard that O-ring. Careful to keep the O-ring from getting too dirty and um, you're gonna want to apply some of this vacuum grease here in order to help with the seal and just overall help that o-ring from uh, not drying out very quickly so I'll generally always use my toothpick to get a little bit of that grease get it onto my fingers there rub a little bit of grease onto that o-ring and then I'm just gonna take my valve stem on the end where there's that small groove and I place it on the o-ring and then apply some pressure and it should pop right on there. Once the, your new o-ring has been greased up and put into the groove, I'm just going to need to put it back into the cylinder. So we'll do exactly what we did earlier where we um, took the hex screws out and took that housing out as well. But first we're going to need to pop in the, this valve stem, make sure to push it in all the way which uh, at the end here you'll see it, it should run flat with the housing. Um, then I'll just 
pull back on the housing, back on this trigger pin here to allow the housing to sit flat. Once that's on there, then we can just throw these hex screws back into the top. And uh, just using you know, your hands, there's no need for any extra tools to apply a lot of torque or anything like that. Generally what I'll do is use this Allen wrench here just to get the screws down in there. And then once both of them are kind of at the end of their thread, I'll uh, tighten them both up. You just want to make sure everything's screwing in nice and softly and uh, uh, prevent any kind of stripping or uh, cross-threading. Our cylinder is ready to go and uh, we could hook this up right now and, and refill. What you're going to need to do is remove this head completely. Uh, you don't want to touch anything in the back here or unscrew any of these parts. You are just going to take um, your hand here when the cylinder is empty, unscrew it. And like that, you're able to fly with the cylinder empty by essentially just turning the cylinder into a metal water bottle by uh, removing the head here. And uh, generally, we'll throw them in a big plastic Ziploc. That way, uh, you know. TSA or whomever can inspect it, but the cylinder is not going to get uh, contaminated. There is a larger o-ring that goes between the bottle and the cylinder head, and it sits up top here at the top of the threads of the cylinder head, and this just helps with, with keeping the seal. So this is a very important piece that from time to time you may need to replace, uh, especially older cylinders. Um, this o-ring can dry out. It can crack. Um, sometimes it'll just get be compressed for so long with all that high pressure that uh, at some point it's a good idea to get it replaced so that you can make sure the seal is not compromised. So um, that's this O-ring right here. Um, these are the same, but if you uh, do end up needing a larger O-ring, feel free to contact BCA. If you do end up needing to put a new larger O-ring on there, uh, just apply a little bit of that grease that comes with your refill kit make sure that's uh, nice and lubed up so that it's going to help with the seal and also kind of keep it nice and moist, um, prevent it from cracking or getting dried up. Uh, we can just easily put the cylinder back together just by screwing it on there. Um, hand tightness is fine. Just like everything else on here, you're just going to want to make sure that it's going on smoothly, prevent any kind of cross threading, um, and you don't uh, want to get anything binded up and we're just going to use our hands to tighten it. No torque wrenches or anything needed. And uh, like that, uh, once again, the cylinder is ready to be refilled. Sometimes uh, you're going to run into uh, some potential issues like the cylinder leaking or possibly your gauge uh, not reading zero when it's empty, um, a few things like that. So uh, if you do run into some issues with your cylinder as far as leaking goes, um, really want to make sure that these o-rings uh, have been replaced recently that the grease has been applied to it as well um, and generally you'll always know uh, that there's an issue with these smaller o-rings if when you're filling air comes out of this gold um, coupler here so anytime that happens it's most likely because the o-ring was not replaced um, you know, things as, as far as a gauge going uh, bad, you know, that's something where you're just going to want to contact BCA and we'll help you out with either a warranty or figuring out a way to get that gauge fixed for you. Check out our online refill map with over 200 different locations, uh, primarily scuba shops, paintball shops, and a lot of retailers are now doing them these days as well. So definitely use that as a great reference for finding a place to get a refill now that you know how to replace your O-rings and feel free to contact BCA with any other questions as well. So good luck and stay safe out there.